My name is David Silver. I lead the self-driving car team at Udacity. Udacity is an online education company based out of California. We teach a wide variety of topics related to software engineering, and I teach our self-driving car program, which trains software engineers to work on autonomous vehicles. Before Udacity, I worked on the autonomous vehicle team at Ford Motor Company, and before that, I was a web software engineer for about 10 years. Carla is Udacity's self-driving car. We have our own self-driving car that students run their code on as the final project in the Udacity Self-Driving Car Engineer Nanodegree Program. Students from all around the world form teams of about five students each, and they build code in a simulator that they send to us. We test it again in our simulator, and when everything works in simulation, then we actually put it on our self-driving car, Carla, um, and we run it through a test track um, near our office in California. And it's really amazing to think that students from all over the world, from Europe, and North America and Asia and Africa and South America um, can come together and build code that actually runs a real self-driving car in California. I think self-driving cars are going to change the world in ways that we can't even imagine. When you think about shortening the constraints of time and distance, I think self-driving cars are going to allow us to do things like save time, travel more than we could before, and be much more safe. About a million and a quarter people die around the world every single year in automotive accidents, and when you think about the potential for computers to be better drivers than humans because computers don't get distracted, they don't drink and drive, and they're attentive 100% of the time, that's the potential to save a lot of lives, over a million lives around the world every single year, and I think the world will be a much better place when we have safe, effective, autonomous vehicles. Self-driving cars, I think of as having five key components, computer vision, sensor fusion, localization, planning, and control. Each of those is a different element of software engineering. Some of them deal more closely with cameras and other sensors, and some of them deal more with artificial intelligence and figuring out how to move the vehicle through the world. So self-driving cars really operate at the intersection of a lot of different disciplines, computer science, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, data science. So there's room for a lot of different people to contribute to the autonomous vehicle revolution. It is really hard for companies to find autonomous vehicle engineers to fill out their self-driving car teams. And in fact, um, the founder of Udacity, who is also the founder of the self-driving car project at Google, his name is Sebastian Thrun, has calculated that the average value of a self-driving car engineer is about $10 million, because if you look at some of the acquisitions that have been made, big car companies like General Motors acquiring companies like Cruise, or companies like Uber acquiring companies like Auto, when you look at the value of each of the engineers to the total acquisition price, it's about $10 million per engineer. And that's indicative of just how hard it is for large automotive companies to find self-driving car engineers. And there are so many companies trying to build out self-driving car teams. Everybody from automotive suppliers to automotive manufacturers to technology companies like Google and Apple to ride-sharing companies like Uber and Lyft. There are just a lot of companies entering this space and a real shortage of engineers who can do the work. Self-driving cars are a really neat area to work in because it's at the intersection of bits of software and of atoms of actual physical vehicles and watching your code actually drive a real physical vehicle through the world is an amazing feeling. That means that self-driving car engineers are responsible for the safety of the vehicle, and this is a really serious responsibility. Fortunately, there has been a lot of work done in automotive safety and testing, um, and more work is being done in building out self-driving car safety standards. So there are guidelines for autonomous vehicle engineers um, to depend on as they build code, um, but it's something that the industry takes really, really seriously, and anytime there's an accident um, involving a self-driving car, even if it's not the autonomous vehicle Fault. It's something that the entire industry, I think, takes um, seriously and, and um, 
feels really responsible for is that we want to be able to save people's lives and, and certainly not imperil anybody. Um, there are many different types of engineers who work in this industry, everybody from machine learning um, and deep learning engineers to automotive engineers to control system engineers, mechanical engineers, um, sensor engineers. So there are a lot of different skills and a lot of different entry points into the industry and, and roles for a lot of different people. But all of those people have a role in making sure that the vehicle that goes out onto the road is safe and makes the world a better place. The role of the driver or the passenger in an autonomous vehicle is one of the most exciting things about self-driving cars. If, if I think about how much time I spend every day as a human driver in traffic, getting all of that time back to either be productive or even um, to have free time to work on hobbies or to read or to sleep, I think that's a tremendous amount of time every day. I spend about 45 minutes commuting to work every single day through traffic and it's stressful and being able to, to relieve myself of that stress and being able to use that time more productively I think is really, really exciting. Now of course there will always be people who want to drive and I think the world will always be open for people who want to drive, but I think the future may look a little bit more like biking looks today. Um, there are some people of course who actually commute to work on their bicycle, but a lot of people bike as more of a recreational hobby on the weekends or in the mornings for exercise for other reasons because they enjoy it. And I think in the future we'll have lots of human drivers who still want to drive because they enjoy it, but a lot of the difficulty of transportation and of driving yourself um, will be lightened by, um, by autonomous vehicles allowing us to use that time for, for different purposes that we enjoy more than fighting traffic. The ability to do different things in the vehicle is dependent on better control and suspension systems. Right now, vehicles are optimized for the driver and the driver is really focused on the road 100% of the time and, and often there are no passengers in the vehicle. So automotive companies haven't spent as much time as they might spend in the future making sure that the ride for non-driving passengers is as smooth as it could be. So I think there's a huge opportunity for control engineers and suspension engineers and UI, UX engineers to make the passenger experience, not the driving experience, but really the passenger experience better so that passengers can do a much wider um, array of activities than you could currently really do in a human-driven car um, because the human-driven car is optimized for the human driver and not for the passenger. I think we already see self-driving cars out on the road today in places like Arizona and Las Vegas and Boston and Singapore and places in China. I think the question is not even so much when will self-driving cars roll out, but where. So it's certainly possible in 2020 that we will have a number of autonomous vehicle deployments, but they might be relatively small. The big challenge is in expanding those deployments so that they're not just in small urban areas, but how do you expand them so that they're in larger areas so that people can ride those autonomous vehicles to their houses in the suburbs? And then how do you connect different cities so somebody can actually ride an autonomous vehicle, say from Kiev to Lviv um, or between other cities? And that may take longer, but I think by 2020, we will certainly be seeing the first autonomous vehicle deployments that anybody can ride in. One of the hardest parts of the autonomous vehicle technology stack right now is the planning phase. That's how the car actually makes decisions about where to go in the world. So the car has gotten really, really good in the last few years at things like perception, perceiving what the world looks like and in control. How do you actually follow a trajectory? But deciding what that trajectory should be and what decision the vehicle should make at any point in time is still a really difficult problem. And particularly for urban driving, there are so many complexities and so many different options that the driver has at any moment in time. Um, and so many other vehicles on the road whose behavior the, the autonomous vehicle needs to predict, all of that becomes really complicated. And that's really the big central question for a lot of autonomous vehicle developers right now. I think the central responsibility of automotive manufacturers, of self-driving car developers, is to build cars that are safe and that humans are excited to ride in. And I think as long as the cars are safe, I think a lot of the convincing of the public will ultimately take care of itself. I think when people get into self-driving cars now, the experience that they often have is that it's frankly a little bit boring. 
You get into the car and it drives, and it's, you, you, you might imagine it is this really exciting kind of risky scenario, but in fact, the car is just driving itself, and pretty quickly you forget that it's even a computer driving, and you, you do other things. Um, and I think as long as that's the experience that people have, that's a really good um, indicator for autonomous vehicles and people will be very comfortable riding in the cars. It's really when, when that riding experience becomes exciting or risky um, that people start to get nervous and, and that's something that we would like to get further away from. We want self-driving cars to really be a very safe but very mundane and routine and boring experience. The U.S started on self-driving cars fairly early. A number of companies um, started working on autonomous vehicles in Silicon Valley about 10 years ago. And one of the things that we've seen outside of Silicon Valley, not just in Europe, but even in Detroit and in Asia and other places, is in the last four or five years, automotive companies and the automotive industry more generally has started to focus on the future and the potential of autonomous vehicles. And now a lot of different companies are working on all sorts of different parts of the self-driving car stack, including a lot of companies in Europe. It used to be the case that this was really just kind of a research project going on in Silicon Valley. And now, in fact, it's a production project going on at almost every automotive company on the planet. And I think that means that self-driving cars are going to advance much faster than they have in the past because there's so much competition coming from so many different parts of the world. And it also means that we'll start to see self-driving cars in a lot of different places. Traditionally, self-driving cars have been in places like Arizona and Las Vegas, where it's very sunny and it's very easy to drive. Um, but the rest of the world is much more difficult, and particularly a lot of Europe is not um, as wide open and as easy to drive as certain parts of the United States. And so I think we'll see a lot of European companies working really hard on the problems of, of how do you drive, how do you operate a self-driving car in Europe, and I'm really excited to see um, what they achieve in the next few years. What I'm really excited about is to see self-driving cars move from what you might call the platform phase into the application phase. So right now, most self-driving car developers are focused on just how do you get the car to work? And that is a really hard and really fascinating and really exciting problem as an engineer. But I think once we get to the point where the cars operate more or less successfully um, and operate in lots of different areas, then the next phase will be what can we do with those vehicles? And I think there are all sorts of exciting things around um, delivery and shopping um, and transportation and even things like maybe mobile hotels um, that, uh, that might change the world in ways that are really hard for us to envision right now, but might become common when the entire world has the ability to deploy self-driving cars at an application level as opposed to having to just focus on the technology of getting the car to drive. So I'm really excited to see what different things different entrepreneurs in Europe and in the United States come up with when they have the ability to deploy self-driving cars wherever they want. I think the self-driving car race is still in its really early days and I'm really excited to see what happens with it. Um, if you look at the number of vehicles that are out on the road, even some of the biggest self-driving car companies right now only have a few hundred vehicles driving out on the road. And I think we need to get to the point where we have thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of vehicles out on the road to really um, learn how to drive in all sorts of different environments. And so I think it's really early days. We're in you know, the first uh, 10 minutes of a football match, if you want to use that analogy. Um, and I think nobody knows who will win you know, after, after the full 90 minutes are played. Um, and I'm really excited to see what all the different companies do. There are automotive suppliers and automotive manufacturers and technology companies and ride sharing companies. And they're all racing towards getting self-driving cars on the road. And I think we as a society will all benefit from that company. Competition. I think Navimotive is a great conference. I was so impressed by the questions and the level of interest and knowledge of, um, of the attendees and some of the really kind of um, challenging and thoughtful topics that they were interested in tackling um, in my talk. Um, and I'm really excited for the lineup that we have today. We're covering everything from um, electric car sharing networks um, to simultaneous localization and mapping um, to building high definition LiDAR maps. I think it's a terrific array of automotive suppliers 
um, and technology companies um, from all over Europe. And I think it's really indicative of how self-driving cars have become a global phenomenon. They're not just limited to Silicon Valley anymore. They're not even just limited to Silicon Valley in Europe and er, in Germany and Detroit. They're really all over the world. And the fact that we have um, world-class companies working on self-driving cars here in Ukraine is really, really exciting to